Welcome to Rad Quarters. Today we'll be talking about interstitial ectopic pregnancy. I'm Dr. Dan Koval, and this episode is sponsored by Samsung Ultrasound. The brilliant images you're about to see were obtained on an RS-85 Prestige Ultrasound unit. We'll review images and I'll highlight some key teaching points throughout as well as show you a companion case. All right, this was a pregnant patient in her 30s and at the time of this ultrasound, her beta HCG level was 3000. So here we're looking at two sagittal transvaginal images. This is the uterine fundus here, the uterine body, and then the lower uterine segment and the cervix. And notice the endometrial canal. We don't see any intrauterine pregnancy on these images, just a normal endometrial stripe. So in that setting, we want to evaluate for a possible ectopic pregnancy. Well, here on this transverse image, we would expect to see a typical tubal ectopic pregnancy out here. This is the uterus, and then this is the adnexal region. But instead, we see this bulge here at the right myometrium. Here we are at the uterine fundus. This is the endometrial stripe. And then when we add color Doppler imaging, it better brings out this interstitial ectopic pregnancy. We see this ring of peripheral hyperemia about thick echogenic rim-like structure with a central anechoic cystic component. But notice how it's separate from the endometrial stripe, where we would normally expect to see an intrauterine pregnancy. And let's take a look at this on real-time imaging. This is a split screen with grayscale and color Doppler imaging. And we can better delineate that ring of peripheral hyperemia there about this interstitial ectopic pregnancy. Notice also that there's only a very thin rim of overlying myometrium adjacent to this ectopic pregnancy. And there's another key finding here. It's subtle, but as we scroll back and forth, you can see that there's this thin echogenic line. Here it is here, separating the ectopic pregnancy from the endometrium. So we see that extending from the endometrium out towards this ectopic pregnancy laterally. And again, a very thin to almost non-existent rim of overlying myometrium. And this is consistent with an interstitial ectopic pregnancy. So this is a rare type of ectopic that occurs in the proximal or interstitial portion of the fallopian tube, actually within the wall of the uterus. So it's much less common than the typical tubal ectopic pregnancy that will occur in the distal ampullary and isthmic portions of the fallopian tube. These are important to identify because they have a higher risk of rupture and hemorrhage with higher morbidity and mortality due to later presentation and the risk of life-threatening hemorrhage because, again, they're in that muscle wall of the uterus. So a rupture there is more significant. And on ultrasound, we'll see an abnormally eccentric distational sac with only a thin surrounding rim of myometrium. If that myometrial thickness is less than 5 millimeters, that's highly suspicious for an interstitial ectopic pregnancy. Even less than 8 millimeters has been shown to be concerning. The other key finding is, again, that interstitial line sign. It's that thin echogenic line extending from the endometrial cavity to the ectopic gestational sac laterally. And it's thought to actually represent that interstitial portion of the tube separating the ectopic pregnancy from the endometrium. And this is a different view from what I showed you previously, but it shows the same findings. Again, there's that interstitial ectopic pregnancy at the lateral aspect of the uterine fundus. And then there is the endometrium. And then notice there's this thin echogenic line between the two representing that interstitial line sign. And it's often subtle, but it's there if you diligently search for it. And it's often better seen on these cine clips. So the treatment for interstitial ectopic pregnancy is sometimes systemic methotrexate. Methotrexate may also be injected into or adjacent to that ectopic gestational sac. If the ectopic pregnancy has ruptured, then a corneal wedge resection may be required. And if that fails, hysterectomy may be indicated. All right, let's look at a companion case. So this was a patient that presented with ultrasound that questioned an interstitial ectopic pregnancy. So here again, we're looking at a midline sagittal view of the uterus, transvaginal imaging. Here's the fundus, uterine body, lower uterine segment, and endocervical region. And again, we see a normal appearing endometrial canal with no intrauterine pregnancy on these images. However, when we turn transverse and move towards the fundus, we see an eccentrically located gestational sac here with a yolk sac and an embryonic pole. And here it is when we turn sagittally and move slightly to the left off axis, there's the endometrial stripe, and then we have this eccentrically located gestational sac. And we've confirmed a live pregnancy here on M-mode imaging showing the fetal heart rate. So is this another interstitial ectopic pregnancy? So let's take a look at the cine images here. So we're looking at this sagittal view of the uterus, and we see nothing in the midline. But again, as we move towards the left, we see that gestational sac with the yolk sac and the embryonic pole. But what we don't see is an interstitial line sign. We actually see the opposite. So we see this thin echogenic portion of the interstitial segment of the tube 
But notice that this is not located between the gestational sac and the endometrium. It's actually located lateral to both of them. Moreover, we also see that there's some echogenic endometrium surrounding this gestational sac, telling us that it's an intrauterine implantation. Also, notice how the overlying myometrium is rather thick. It's greater than 5 millimeters in thickness. So this does not support an interstitial ectopic pregnancy. What can be quite helpful is to generate 3D reformatted images. And here we have a cone down view of the fundus here of the uterus. And then there we're looking at the endometrial cavity. And we can see that this gestational sac is laterally and eccentrically located within the endometrial cavity. But again, it's an intrauterine implantation. Here we have a slightly angled view, again showing that gestational sac at the angle here of the uterine cavity. So this is known as an angular pregnancy. So this is also rare, but it's an intrauterine pregnancy with implantation eccentrically high at the lateral angle of the uterine cavity. So these will be more medially located than interstitial ectopic pregnancies, which we would see here. So this would be where the interstitial portion of the fallopian tube would be, and this is the location for an interstitial ectopic pregnancy. And notice that this angular pregnancy is more medial in location. As we saw on the Cine images, we will not see an interstitial line sign, and there will be more than 5 millimeters of myometrial thickness overlying. Now, these pregnancies can be normal and result in a live birth, but there is an increased risk of miscarriage and uterine rupture. And unfortunately, this patient did miscarry a couple days after the ultrasound. Regardless, these usually need to be followed closely to ensure growth towards the endometrial cavity as opposed to towards the interstitial portion of the tube. Now, there is some terminology that can be confusing here as these are sometimes referred to as a corneal pregnancy. That's controversial, though, as the earliest use of the term corneal pregnancy specifically refers to intrauterine implantations in the setting of anomalous uteri, like uterocorduate, bicornuate, or septate uteri. To further muddle things, corneal pregnancy is sometimes even used interchangeably with interstitial ectopic pregnancy. So depending on your practice, you may just want to avoid the term corneal pregnancy due to this confusion, and be descriptive and specifically describe whether the gestational sac is intrauterine or ectopic. Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you found this educational. Thank you to our sponsor, Samsung Ultrasound. If you like this lecture, a great way to support us is to subscribe to the video podcast on Apple or Spotify, or by clicking the YouTube subscribe button. Reviews are always greatly appreciated. To see bonus teaching material posted throughout the week, follow us on social media. Links in the show notes, or click the YouTube community tab. Until next time, radiology is life. 